it is the ultimate face-off. Just 10 horsepower separates these two beasts, but surely there's a lot more that separates them. Come with me as we review the Range Rover P565 against the Range Rover SVR. You're watching Driven Plus. So let's start with the Range Rover. Now this is the P565 autobiography. Now for me, this is the flagship model from Range Rover. It's obviously got 565 horsepower, 0 to 60 in 5.2 seconds. But looking from the outside, nothing tells you it's got a V8 under that bonnet, which for me, if you're owning one, which is a little bit of a problem, you'd at least want people to know you've got a V8 under there. So under the bonnet here lies the five litre V8 supercharged engine. One problem about the supercharge is it's always constantly running. Now I've just noticed here, it's got the extra washer bottle, which is about 50 quid from factory. And then also here you've got the, the air intakes. So when the car is, is raised for off-road activities, this will give you about 900 mil of wading depth. So looking onto the rear of the car, you've got nice silver badging. Also got the autobiography badge here and the Land Rover that side. Again, there is no V8 badging. You've got the square tailpipes which you get across all Range Rover models. As we look into the boot, one button to lift the top part of the boot up and then to lift the tailgate down, it's that button there. Now, one problem about the autobiography, if you're comparing it against a Vogue or Vogue SE, the autobiography has less boot space because it's got that bulkhead for the rear seats, which is one thing you should consider if you're gonna plan on taking this on trips abroad with four or five people in. So whether you're taking your girl to pony club or taking your boy to rugby, now you can sit and watch on this tailgate, which is strong enough to take a person. So sitting in the back of the autobiography, looking at the seats, the they're very rounded, so it kind of hugs you like it does in a front seat. Now, here you've got all the controls to control it, so you, they are rear adjusted. They're also rear heated and cooled. So as I bring it forward, and get comfier. Now, to bring the middle armrest down is a case of pressing the button, which does take a little bit of time. and it vibrates whilst doing so. And say I want to put my water bottle in the cup holder, I have to press another button. And I have to open something again. Oh, and it doesn't even fit. So that's one bad thing. So one cool thing about sitting in the, in the back, if you press this F button, this will turn orange and you can control the seat in front of you. So say you've got, you want more room, it's a case of putting it forward when you can easily push it back. So you've got loads of room. And then one cool feature about this Range Rover is I can control that window from this seat. So press it one, goodbye for now. Okay, so looking into the front, of the car, if I start the engine, you get a nice animation with the dials going up and on the speedometer, you get a nice little logo of supercharge. So the driver does get reminded that he is driving something rather fast. Now looking into the mid console for a big Volvic bottle, the problem is it doesn't fit in properly. The one thing I don't like about the Range Rovers is the twisting gear selector. Now for me, I prefer the one that's in the SVR, which is a handle, which you will see in a minute. It's just more sporty feeling and it's just better on the, on the hands. Now, one thing here, you get a cool box as standard in the autobiography. So say you're driving along and you want to keep anything cool, just pop it in the fridge and it does that job. So what's the SVR like? So straight away, as you can tell, it's a lot more aggressive than the Range Rover. Now, first of all, it's got SVR badging, which is one good start, and it's also got Brembo front brakes. But one thing I've just noticed there, they're not drilled, which for me, for a performance car, you'd at least expect them to be. Now, one thing that I didn't mention before was the weight. So this weighs about 2.3 tons, where the other one weighs two and a half tons. So there is 200 kilos in difference, which, which is a lot of difference when you think of it. So this is the normal SVR, it's not the carbon edition, so it hasn't got the carbon vented bonnet. This has 575 horsepower, 0 to 60 in 4.1 seconds, and this will do a top speed of 176 miles per hour, whereas the Range Rover would only do 155. Picking between these two cars is like being naughty boy 
versus being sensible-ish with the Range Rover. Now let's be honest today, it's all about the engines. Now looking under the bonnet here, there's not much difference between the two cars. One difference being you've got the SVR badge in there, but you don't get the extra washer bottle here, so someone hasn't ticked the 40 quid or 50 quid option from factory. Coming on to the rear of the SVR, now compared to the original Sport, this is a complete redesign of the rear end. Now it's only when you can put the two together you can really tell. So for instance here you've got obviously the four quad tail bikes which look awesome and you've also got the SVR badge and everything's blacked out. So as we get into the SVR, you've got an SVR badge on the steering wheel and you've also got an SVR badge on the left of the dash there. Very similar to the other Range Rover, you've got the same setup here and one of my preferred options over the, from the SVR over the Range Rover is the gear stick. So this car comes with the, the heated and cooled seats and an optional extra that's been ticked from factory on this car is the cool box which you get in the other Range Rover. Now one cool thing is when you put it in dynamic mode you can uh, do your lap timing if you want to take it on track, your, your G meter so how much G's you, you're creating when you're cornering or accelerating or braking and your throttle and brake response. But for me pretty pointless isn't it? You're not going to use it on your way to Pony Club. So as I'm in the rear of the SVR, there's one thing I've immediately noticed. Now this is all about the driver. Now Range Rover, don't get me wrong, it's a beautiful place to be. Leather everywhere, but the experience you get in the rear seats of the Range Rover is far better than the SVR. This is more sport focused. Don't get me wrong, it hugs you very well, but if I was to choose on where to go for a long journey, it'd probably be in the other one. So that's the end of the sound test. Now, just put in the comments which one you prefer. I think I already know what you're gonna say anyway, but just let us know. Personally, I actually do prefer the SVR. This one's a little bit more reserved. However, driving it, it it's a different feeling. One thing I've noticed, when you come to a junction you, and, you, and you come off, it's very hesitant. It's as if, when you put your foot down, it's like, oh, am I gonna go? And then it all decides to go, so it's like, pretty much 70% or nothing, which is one annoying thing. But Land Rover, they've been very clever enough when tuning this car, so it's very clever because they've refined the V8 so much that you know it's there, but it's it's quiet enough to relax. So where, we'll see in the SVR in a minute, I'm pretty sure you know it's there at all time. Whereas with this, if I put it in sport and play with the paddles, then it limes everything up. Now you know it's there. But now put everything back to normal. It's just a normal Range Rover, which is what you want. One thing about these cars, which is just absolutely epic, it's just how effortless and how comfortable they are to drive. I could drive this for hours and still feel as fresh as I did when I set off. I mean, the seats, you just sink into them. I mean, the headrest, you've got cushions that come round to you there. It's just driving in first class everywhere. And the thing is, the good thing about having this car, nice straight road, put it in sport, put my foot down, and you know that V8 is still there. And it just keeps pulling. 700 newton meters of torque, in fact. It pulls like a train. And a car this size, doesn't feel it should go as, this quick. It's groundbreaking. So as I'm coming up to this junction now, I'll stop, put my foot down, it's like, come on, come on, come on, go. It's lazy in that remark. And you have to put your foot down even more and then a lot more power comes. It's very hesitant. So these cars now you can pick up for about between 60 to 70,000 pound. SVIs you can pick up as well, depending on the age, around the same price. But let's be honest, 
if you're buying this car the least of your worries is going to be the fuel consumption but whilst we're on the topic this car well we're driving it today I've been averaging let's have a look 16.8 mpg but if you do take your time you can easily on the motorway get up to 25 mpg so if you want a reason to really buy a Range Rover go to your missus and say look I'm going to save money and if she asks why say well you know that monthly massage I get from the Thai place well the Range Rover has massage seats so you can save yourself 50 quid a month the pinnacle about owning this car is, don't get me wrong, it's absolutely beautiful to drive, but I think where the benefits of owning this car comes is either sitting in the back or in the passenger seat, because being a passenger in this car is far more superior than being the driver in my eyes. So I'm interested to see how the SVR will drive, because I think the SVR is more pointed towards being, being a driver, whereas this is more being a passenger. But let's find out. Now, in the SVR, first thoughts, well, everything's a lot firmer, which you'd expect anyway. Now, one thing that I've just noticed driving in a built-up area here, it's less hesitant than the Range Rover. It's actually much easier to drive, which I suppose you'd expect because everything's been tuned to this car specifically for speed and, and drivability. But look, I'm 23, I'm young, I'd much rather be sat in this or be seen in this than the Range Rover. But however, saying that, being driven round, I'd much rather be in that. It all comes down to personal preference. So one thing I do miss coming from the Range Rover is the armrest here. Now it's a bit, a bit petty, but it's a nice to have. And also on this side, the armrest is like two different positions. You don't know really where to put your arm is, but your arms should be there and getting ready for the drive. Right, so we've got a nice open road ahead of us, nice and twisty. Let's put the gearbox in sport and put the car in dynamic mode. Right, so now I'm now going to play with these paddles here. Okay, so it's like an angry dog now and it just wants to go and it goes well. And it's doing the corner as well as well. <laughs> wow, I didn't think it'd be that fast. And the sound, the pops as well. <laughs> I mean, just listen to that. I, mean, I can't believe how much of a different car it's become. I mean, I put everything in sport, it's most aggressive settings. It's a completely different car. I cannot believe it, you know, going down through the revs. Those pops there, I don't know if you can hear it through my microphone, but... Oh! Right, that was fun, I want to do it again. Oh, it's like an angry lion, not a dog, angry lion. And then the thing is, when I've had enough, drive, take it out of dynamic, and everything just loosens up. I mean, how, how they do that is phenomenal. And the difference is there is, I didn't realise, because buttons sometimes are just for gimmicks, aren't they? But these buttons actually do a lot of work. Something actually works on a Land Rover. I'm very surprised. Right, so it's decision time. Before I make a decision, and before I go, thank you for watching, like the video, and subscribe if you like our content. Now, in my left hand, I've got the keys to the Range Rover. In my right hand, I've got the keys to the SVR. Yeah, it's this one. <laughs>